Perillo. Welcome back. Well, after a stellar weekend, beautiful weather continuing, albeit a little bit cooler today, warming up a little bit more so tomorrow after a chilly start. And for the rest of the week, we're going to see milder temperatures and that trend continuing into the weekend where we'll see highs getting back into the lower 80s. So a flashback to the 80s, hopefully not any of the clothing that we remember from the 1980s as well. So let's take a look at the big picture across the lower 48 high pressure in charge across Texas, low pressure up across portions of the Canadian Maritimes, the Northeast allowing for a nice cool northwesterly flow. And as you go farther to the north and gain higher latitude, you are certainly looking at much cooler temperatures. Meanwhile, for us, we're kind of in between, but a nice cool down and back to the west warming up and still uh, winds that are fanning fires in the west. It's been one heck of a year there. We've not talked about it much because the tropics have been so busy and they continue to be here. We are in November and we're talking the strongest storm on record in the Atlantic Basin. Hurricane Ada is an absolute beast. It's gone through a rapid intensification cycle where yesterday was a tropical storm with uh, 50, 60 mile per hour winds. Now it's sporting 150 mile per hour winds and pressure continues to drop on this system and is expected to become a category five at landfall current sustained winds at 150 gusts 185 pressure down from 938 millibars earlier this afternoon now down to 927 so we think the winds are going to respond to that and that's what's going to make it a category five storm at landfall in the northeastern portion of nicaragua and if it makes landfall as a cat five it'll be the first storm to make landfall in the month of november as a category five and keeping in tradition with the uh, uh, current trends of 2020 and also that rapid intensification cycle That's climate change rearing its head. The busy season has been a natural variability, but these rapid intensification cycles we saw with Laura, with Delta, with Zeta, every storm we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years or so is related to these warmer ocean temperatures and climate change for sure. So that's where we're seeing it. Now, as for the forecast down the line, we see a lot of variability. Uh, where the system may go. It may dissipate over uh, Central America. It may push into the Pacific or remnants thereof could make it into uh, the Caribbean. And that's what the Hurricane Center is forecasting. Not only forecasting that, but also uh, to become possibly a tropical storm again. Here's the latest GFS model showing a storm by Western Cuba in 10 days. And the Euro model showing much the same, only it's much more robust on development, bringing this system back to a major hurricane, threatening the same general area and again could threaten the southeastern Gulf, particularly Florida down the line. We'll have to watch and we don't know what shape or form. It could be a much weaker system by that time. No threat to Louisiana for now. Temperatures mid to upper 30s. The numbers a little bit lower across Senla. So again, protect the tender vegetation uh, north of I-10, south of I-10 and along I-10, just above that uh, patchy light frost zone, lower 40s coastal parishes as well. And then after that cool start, warming up nicely tomorrow afternoon into the low to mid 70s. So winter chill in the air, 41, 42 the low. That'll make it the coolest since March 7th. Uh, most areas above the frost zone. Then tomorrow, 73 the high with lots of sunshine, uh, lighter winds overall. And as we go down the line, we're talking mid to upper 70s for the rest of the week. More clouds arriving though as we head into the weekend with those temperatures the weekend and beyond for now back into the lower 80s with the next front not scheduled for maybe another 12 or 13 days down the road. That's it for weather. We'll have more coming up right after we go to Jim. All right. Thanks, Rob.